Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Great to have everyone here. Uh, let's take a look at our agenda first. And we're going to talk through the agenda. After we've looked at the agenda, we'll then work, work on the items on the agenda. So we'll talk through open action items as one, then op adopt open JDK as a potential replacement image, base JDK for Jenkins images, talk about the current status of that, then the evaluation of adopt open JDK, open J9 as an additional image, uh, then whoops, discussion on Windows, discussion on Windows installer, Hacktoberfest, and I assume Alex, that one's you, and possibly Oleg? Yeah, I'm in. Okay, great. Then Hacktoberfest results. Um, Plug-in installation manager is on our agenda. Um, if Natasha arrives, we may, we'll, we may have a deeper discussion. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be brief. Mac OS native installer deprecation topic with Oleg. Potential topic on broadening platform support for Docker images. Uh, then Mac OS native installer updates. And I think it's the same as mine. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So we'll just put that. Uh, I just want to keep that link and we mm -hmm. put it underneath yours. Great. Thanks, Oleg. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything that we've missed that needs to be added to the agenda? Maybe we could uh, put a uh, October first high in the list so that we finish this organizational part and then switch to technical topics because I see October first in the middle of uh, installer whatever topics. I like that. That's good. Let's lead with Hacktoberfest. That way, yeah, it's also it's a great story, I think. So let's do that. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so open action items. I'm sincerely sorry. I still have the open action item. It will probably remote, remain open for another month to open a JET for a process to choose how we do Docker operating system support and platform selection rules. Um, it's we're making progress by doing the work, but we need to also get a process described that we can use to select. Oleg, anything you want to report on the Windows support policy? Mm, nothing specific except the fact that I'm going to do it. Mm. Uh, this week, uh, I spent some time uh, to renew the browser support policy. And yeah, I think that I will do Windows support policy in a similar way. So probably even without job. Uh, the yeah, Windows support policy is likely more controversial than web browsers. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think that uh, having a draft um, would be a good start. Great. All right. Alex, anything you'd like to report on the to-do on Windows installer code signing? Oh, I noticed that the CDF ticket is resolved. Congratulations, everybody. Um, and that we've the release automation project is proceeding. Yeah, uh, the project is proceeding. Uh, we had some uh, reviews here and there. Um, Olivier um, did a lot of enhancements for the uh, release automation infrastructure. Now I'm trying to document it a bit and uh, to review remaining pull requests, uh, but it looks uh, pretty good right now. Um, so yeah, the certificate is yet to be obtained, but at least uh, this major block is resolved. And, and another block here, sorry. The, the certificates, the certificate not yet obtained, is that blocked by any, any, tech, any legal hurdles? No, it's just a technical process. So okay. we spent some time today with Olivier on the call to request the certificate. I mean, uh, firstly, uh, yeah, CDF set up a legal entity. So that's why it took so long because we needed a special legal entity for continuous delivery foundation. Uh, then um, they created a DigiCert account. And uh, after that, uh, we were able to do the request for the certificates. So these uh, steps are done, and now we just need to get a real certificate. So it should take uh, some time, but um, yeah, there should be no obstacles there. Great. 
And the, another optical obstacle that we had for Jenkins release automation is Macos packaging. We will talk about it uh, later. So, yeah, it's in the list. Great, excellent. Yeah. Okay, Alex, anything you needed to report on that topic? Uh, no, that pretty much covers it. I'm just excited to see the code signing stuff that needs some traction. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Oleg, Hacktoberfest, do you want to share your screen or do we want to just talk? You can uh, just uh, open the email because okay. I don't have so many things to show. Uh, All right. Yeah, just a quick summary. So, yeah, we had Hacktoberfest. Um, yeah, if you just open uh, the first email, uh, there are some uh, statistics published. Actually, uh, I have a bit more statistics as a draft blog post. But yeah, uh, there is more than 100 newcomer contributors, and it was a uh, history high uh, months for Jenkins. So we had uh, 915 unique contributors and almost 200 uh, companies contributing. So yeah, it's uh, really high for Jenkins. And uh, let's see whether we can retain uh, these numbers for the next months. Probably not, but we could, uh, we could always try. Uh, yeah, uh, regarding the rest, yeah, um, we have 250 Hacktoberfest pull requests. So these are confirmed ones. We don't know who exactly participated in Hacktoberfest, so it's just an estimation. I uh, pinged uh, Hacktoberfest team to provide some organization level metrics, but yeah, no guarantee. Last year they uh, decided not to collect anything. Uh, regarding uh, the changes, I put some highlights in the list. Um, yeah, you can see that uh, there are changes here and there. Um, now what is matter for the platform special interest group? Uh, yeah, firstly, a lot of really plugins got documentation updates and bumps. Uh, then uh, we had uh, changes in Jenkins configuration as code plugin. So hopefully we will officially move it to uh, the seek umbrella, but yeah, there is a lot of documentation, a lot of uh, test framework improvements. Well, taking the Angora discussion about uh, Jenkins 2.199, probably not enough, but uh, at least we are getting somewhere. Um, so, yeah, uh, there is a lot of changes there. And of course, uh, there is uh, Mark's platform library plugin, which also got uh, a lot of improvements <laughs> during High Cover Fest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, what a great story. That is, yeah, thank you very much for leading that effort. That yeah. plug-in documentation story in particular is quite amazing. All right, we had a crucial infrastructure challenge with the wiki, but but now it's turned into something very, very positive as you're getting much better plug-in documentation in a much more maintainable location. Yeah, and tomorrow we have a meetup uh, to talk about it. Right, Just very Just somebody is interested. Thank you. Thanks, Oleg, very, very much. Yeah, so basically that's it. Now, one of the follow-ups, um, I'm thinking about uh, doing uh, feature projects beyond Hacktoberfest. So one of the takes away, takeaways for Hacktoberfest that feature projects really help to focus the effort. So I'm thinking, what if we do it uh, on a regular basis? For example, feature project of the month, let's say plugin documentation or maybe docker packaging or something like that so just highlighting a particular area and see whether we can facilitate contributions there so this is sorry i missed i didn't catch your second se second idea that was plugin documentation uh, oh no docker packaging oh let's say so oh docker packaging yep. good yeah, yeah so where i'm going that uh, if there are interests and in special interest groups and if there are people who are help, happy uh, uh, to help with reviews or at least who have time for that uh, then uh, we could uh, try kick off this feature project thing and see whether we uh, could um, address seek goals because for me docker packaging yeah we have a lot of uh, pending pull requests and it's basically in my hall of shame because I have no time right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting there. So maybe by facilitating contributions, we could uh, resolve these bottlenecks. Right. I, I like that. I like the notion of increased energy just by promoting, hey, this month's featured project is this. Very good. Just uh, something 
to think about for the moment, but yeah, maybe after Jenkins world when dust settles, uh, yeah, we could try something. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else on, on Hacktoberfest? Not for me. All right, next topic then, Adopt Open JDK Hotspot. So Jordan, thanks very much for being here with us. I'm, I don't have any progress personally to report on Adopt Open JDK Hotspot changes. I haven't evaluated that. I used my time to evaluate Open J9, uh, but the transition pull request is, let's see if I recall correctly, has not yet been submitted for this one. Do you recall the number on that one by chance? I do, I do not. It's a good question. I thought that we were still waiting for a pull request with that proposal. We oh, that's right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that has been um, created. Jim's on vacation, so um, some, there hasn't been too much progress on our end. Right. So, so it's, this one it will likely wait a month, a month before significant progress, unless the Hackfest at uh, DevOps World makes some progress on it. Okay. Mm. Is it a subject for the Hackfest? I it, I don't know that it's been proposed. They just sometimes those Hackfest topics adjust and and change. Yeah. And so I can also say for sure that it hasn't been proposed yet. But ah, if okay. someone uh, wants to add it to the list, uh, please do so. That is, let's see, the date for that is December 2, 2019 in Lisbon, right? Right. Okay. Now, Jordan, if I understand correctly, you won't be in Lisbon. You're, you're, you're not going to be at Jenkins World, right? I will not. But I actually have, I have a quick question, not to sidetrack. Is any of that going to be live streamed? Uh, the Hackfest, definitely not. I don't know if they plan to live stream any portions of the conference in the past they've live streamed the keynote addresses okay. but i i don't know um i don't know i haven't seen anything saying that lisbon will be live streamed i know that san francisco a portion of it was oh, okay cool oh like had oh. you heard anything with regard to that mm, yes uh, likely there will be no broadcast okay mm, yeah, even for keynotes if i understand correctly so okay. I'm not sure. Do we have advocates on our pre seek meeting today? I think that uh, everybody is on Cube console, likely not. Yeah, I thought that Tracy had canceled the advocacy mm -hmm. to meeting today. Good okay, question. Yeah. yeah, I'll ask uh, Alisa then. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did get a chance to speak with the adopt team yesterday and I did find out that around hopefully next week or in the next two weeks there should be the enabling of Debian and Alpine and UBI based images Ooh. so oh, that, those are great. in the works behind the scenes right now um, and the plan from what I understand right now is they're gonna push to the unofficial repo first and then verify everything is up to stuff and um, then move forward going to the official repos. Excellent. Okay, so that, and those will be, so even Alpine. Okay, that's very interesting. Yep, so the adopt team is going to try Alpine again. And um, from what I hear, it, it's going okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll Here see we some development about. with that. Sorry. So in this case, we talk about both Java 8 and Java 11, right? Because uh, Adopt OpenHDK tried to provide images for 11. I'm not sure where it landed. I'm not sure exactly which one they're going to package Alpine with. I can ask and get back to you guys on that. Mm -hmm. So right now, we don't provide Alpine for Java 11. Personally, I'm happy to keep doing so. But if there is interest uh, from someone to have this image, we could try it. Yeah, I I thought that that the Open JDK project had explicitly rejected Alpine for Java 11, hadn't they? Oh, like that there. Yes, uh, they did. Okay. And yeah, I've seen that Adopt Open JDK had some experiments with it. I'm not. I haven't seen the final state. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, and I, I agree with Oleg that there's no issue for for the Jenkins project, as far as I can tell, if Alpine does not support Java 11. We, we already have Alpine support for Java 8, but the OpenJDK team's decision to not support Java 11 lobbies that we don't have, we, it's not as big an issue. And I, I haven't heard much press from other consumers looking for Java 11 based OpenJDK or Java 11 Alpine support. All right, well, that is great news, Jordan. Anything else you wanted to report there? Um, so I just had a quick question for Alex and if he was able to get through his tests and if he needed any help, I can direct him to the proper channeling to um, get direct internal help. And that's on nano server? Uh, correct. I, I saw um, that uh, you were able to submit your bug issue and that's also been merged, Alex. Um, and then there was another one. I'm blanking on it right now. Uh, there was another one you had opened up about running the test cases. Um, it was just, uh, I just wanted to kind of run additional testing to make sure there weren't other um, issues that needed to be fixed before a full like um, nano server image could be like, you know, uh, approved, I should say. Oh, so okay. um, I did try and get some of the stuff going. I needed to change my image to include things like uh, um, MSYS to do a compile and things like that. So I, I, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Okay. Um, if you need any help with that, I can give you uh, an email and a Slack channel available. Um, I can just put it in the uh, SIG chat. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I also want to just say that um, the adopt team is really excited to keep moving forward with you guys. Um, they're, they're really interested in becoming more involved with the open source community. Great. So now, and the, the nano server, do I have it in the correct place? That is related to open J nine, not to just adopt open JDK hotspot or is it, is it both J nine and hotspot? I, th I think they're, oh. Hotspot is working fine for nano server. I submitted a, a PR to adopt OpenJDK um, to build nano server images. My guess is they will only be in the unofficial list for a period of time. Um, but at least it's it's rolling. The, I had issues with the OpenJ9, so that's why it was not submitted as part of that PR. And so this work is to be able to um, support OpenJ9 images as well for nano server. I see. Thank you. Okay. An official packages post is not uh, a blocker because we have Jenkins uh, for evaluation uh, repository. Mm. So we can uh, create images based on uh, unofficial uh, images and just deploy our experimental version uh, if needed. Uh, yeah, no, when you're working on multi platform support, um, there was a lot of patches for deployment scripts, so it shouldn't be a big deal to implement it now. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Jordan, anything else you wanted to report there? Um, lastly, with that 890 pull request, uh, with the optimizations with the open JDK J9 image, I believe it was, uh, we did locate that individual who made the PR request. And uh, unfortunately today, his manager was not able to join, but there is drive behind that pull request. And there's active work going on with that behind the scenes. Great, okay, so that's, and PR 890 is, that's the one that there was a predecessor to it that was similar that we were going to ignore for now. And 890 is the one that is active, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Great. That's very good. Thanks very, very much, Jordan. Anything else? Uh, that's all for today. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Next topic then, Windows installer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, Alex, would you like uh, to drive it? Sure. So um, 
there is a, a branch that has been created in the packaging repository. Um, and so Oleg changed the target of my PR for that, which is great. Um, so that it's kind of tracked in the right place. Um, he also made some suggestions to the pull request and I have um, incorporated those changes. Um, so uh, I think it's, it, it, it would be good to get some more eyes on it. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else who has experience with um, Wix Windows installers, um, but just getting some eyes on it would be good. Uh, some more reviews. I was um, able uh, to build uh, the installer maybe two months ago and test it, so it worked fine on my machine at that point. And uh, awesome. since it's an experimental branch, I think we could just go ahead uh, and integrate it because uh, the story uh, blocks uh, core release automation. Uh, so why we need this experimental branch? Um, um, there are two pull requests. One is from Alex uh, to consider Windows packaging, uh, but we cannot merge it right away because it would uh, impact uh, Kiki's uh, automation uh, for releases because uh, he relies on scripts. So there was um, agreement to just integrate everything at once. So the new core release automation would include the new Windows packages. And that's why we need uh, this story. And uh, integration branch uh, is a very good approach for us because we can just uh, lend uh, this change and uh, if needed, to build something on the top. So, mm, personally, I'm plus one for merging this branch. I already approved that. If somebody else uh, takes a look, uh, we can just integrate the stuff and then we include new releases in the, um, uh, the experimental uh, release flow, which is already deployed by Olivia. So, so it sounds like we definitely need it. I'm plus one for it. I have not evaluated it. Is it crucial that I've got windows available to me? I could run the evaluation, but time is pretty crunched right now. Um, yes. One thing that, uh, yeah, since we have uh, this automation in the works, maybe we could uh, just kill to hairs and test uh, the bits produced by uh, release automation flow. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, basically, whatever we merge now, it won't impact uh, the production, it won't impact the uh, Jenkins Weekly or LTS releases. Uh, so that uh, yeah, we can be quite relaxed about uh, what we integrate. Okay, so so mm -hmm. if there are changes, it's not going to def not going to damage the production mm -hmm. Windows installer package that Kosuke yep. creates. Okay. Excellent. Then I'm plus one to merge it. Yeah, I'll I can put a comment on it that giving that making that plus one public. Mm -hmm. Alex, are you fine with that? Yeah, it sounds great to me. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot for all your work there. Yeah, it's a long project, but yeah. Yes, Alex, you have been absolutely heroic on the Windows installer. Thank you very much. Anything else, Alex or Oleg? Nothing from me. No, not for me. All right, thank you. So the plugin installation manager uh, has released 1.0, and I think, and 1.0.1. .1. Yeah. And that's that's great. I have not yet put it into use in my my case, so there's still work to do there. Next topic: Mac OS native installer. Oleg. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll probably just um, screen share if you don't mind, uh, Mark. Oh please, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I do. I need. I probably need to stop sharing first. There, I've stopped sharing. You should be able to take the share now. Yeah. Okay, uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so yeah, Macos native installers. Um, if we go to the repository, which we already discussed a few times today, packaging, uh, there is a pull request uh, for um, yeah, uh, for new built environment. And one of the things there is that, uh, yeah, there is a quite long to-do list there. But OX, OSX packaging uh, is not marked. And uh, yeah, there is a reason for that. Because uh, in order to get an old OSX package, you need macros mm, somewhere. Uh, 
Um, and uh, this is a problem for our new environment because it's based inside Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, thanks to Alex, we have uh, Win uh, Windows support there, but we don't have uh, macOS support. And uh, basically, there is no expectation of having it anytime soon. Um, and uh, uh, so obviously we could have used the external uh, service, for example, Mac Stadium or whatever to build uh, these images. But the question was uh, whether it really makes sense because firstly we have uh, brew images. So yeah, just for example, uh, brew formula for Jenkins. So anybody who uses um, Mac OS will, will like to use brew. Uh, it doesn't include um, uh, um, uh, uh, graphical user interface uh, for installer. So yeah, yeah, for macOS we have similar installer as for Windows. Uh, but yeah, uh, the problem that we cannot really build it. And the idea was that uh, what if we deprecate it and instead of that uh, just uh, say that Homebrew is our uh, new package which we would recommend. So there is a thread um, in the developer mailing list about that, and uh, we have built a consensus. Um, and yesterday we had a Jenkins governance meeting where we basically approved the deprecation of this package. And right now there are two patches pending. So one is documentation patch, uh, which basically reworks uh, how uh, um, uh, everything is documented, because now if you go to Jenkins, uh, your download, so here you can click macOS, and basically you get uh, installer running. So like that, but it's not what we want. Uh, and it's, I just reworked this page. So now it will um, include, uh, yeah, where we are. I have screenshots, so I don't need to run anything. So yeah, we will have a new page, uh, which basically promotes Homebrew as a default package. A native installer will be still there, but deprecated. They will be into to Jenkins mirrors, so everybody will be able uh, to take uh, the releases. And uh, these packages will be considered as a third party. Uh, so we don't maintain them inside Jenkins project, but uh, yeah, they will they will be still uh, available. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the plan. And there is also a blog post which uh, will announce to that. Uh, one of interesting things there that uh, yeah, we need to define some uh, deprecation plan. And this plan is uh, quite uh, uh, complicated there because we cannot say uh, when we release uh, core automation. So what I did here, I said that, okay, starting from the next weekly and next LTS, we consider the packages as deprecated. Um, then uh, once a new core release automation flow is done, basically we will stop uh, shipping packages. Uh, yeah, would, so one problem there is that uh, it may, has security implications because if you uh, stop shipping packages, uh, it also means we stop shipping security releases uh, for those who use packages. So there is some migration guidelines. Uh, well, at, I was unable to test them because I don't have uh, my course anymore. Uh, but yeah, at least uh, there are some pointers to people who want to migrate. So yeah, this is a summary of the story. Uh, uh, reviews are pending and uh, I hope that we will be able to land to them soon. And I guess uh, the documentation is also similar to what we need to do for Windows packages because once we, uh, so now we have um, uh, chocolatey packaging, so maybe we could do something like that. So we could reference uh, installers we ship. Obviously they, we don't deprecate them, so they would be on top. But we also can uh, reference Homebrew on the landing page and the, in our installation guidelines. Sorry, not from brew or chocolatey. So that uh, we just close the loop there and have better documentation. Okay. Excellent. So, so, so just to be mm -hmm. doubly sure, so that means that Kosuke continues generating macOS packages with the, the current process, but we will formally stop generating them when we transition to the new core release automation. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because yeah, it just doesn't force the efforts to implement that. Well, we could do it later if uh, there is a uh, huge demand, but uh, historically nobody really maintains uh, this installer. Um, we don't have infrastructure, it takes time and everybody uses it. So what's the point? So, uh, and mm -hmm. there isn't 
substantial gain by telling Kosuke he could stop generating the macOS proxy package sooner, better to just do it all as part of the core release automation transition. Yep. Uh, that's my plan. Okay. So if uh, macOS packages are being uh, generated, no need to change anything. And when uh, they stop being generated, okay, we can kill that. Uh, one uh, open question is actually with LTS because uh, yeah, well, I was tempted to say that uh, um, so tentative new baseline is 2.204. This is a discussion in the developer mailing list now, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not confirmed. But yeah, usually our process is that we don't deprecate anything between uh, LTS releases, and here it may might happen that uh, 2.204.1 is released with macOS package, and the next release is released without macOS package, and to make it more fun, it may be also a security release. So yeah, this is uh, the gap which uh, concerns me a lot. But yeah, I think that in this case, we will just coordinate with KK to make sure that the two or the three release is also released with macOS. Ah, it's, so there's a p potential that even when we bring the new core release automation online, that Kosuke mm -hmm. could run the old release engine for a piece, for a piece if we need that piece. Yes. Um, uh, so how currently um, releases uh, work? Um, so if you go to packaging, there we have um, master branch. Basically, master branch is used for weekly, but for stable releases, there are other branches, so you can see them there. So it means that, uh, yeah, there is uh, a branch for the current release, and for the next, there will be another one. And what it means is that uh, yeah, even if we integrate uh, these experimental branches into the weekly baseline, it won't be a problem for LTS. And yeah, for weekly, if something stops working, okay, we can live with it. Uh, except it's a security release, but for LTS, everything will be stable. Excellent. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oleg. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, just heads up, but yeah, the reviews will be appreciated and I hope we will really integrate it soon. Great. And I, I hope to get a review. Things are a little crunched this morning, but, but by end of my day today, I fully hope to get a review and approve on the on the doc side at least of the macOS native installer deprecation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Anything else, Oleg, mm -hmm. on macOS native installer? No, nothing for me. Okay. All right. Last topic is on broadening platform support for Docker images. Actually, this is one. Jordan, is there anything that you needed to report there? I have not had any further con conversations with these potential folks. And so for instance, Oregon State University with their available images, um, and we hadn't done any further discussion on the Docker image auto build. So I was prone to leave this topic and let it wait for our next platform SIG meeting, which will be in about a month. Yeah, we can let that wait. Um, one thing I do want to mention, though, Travis has an, uh, officially released the S390 architecture for their auto, beta automated pipelines. I believe it's going to be in beta. I have a link for that. I can give you after this as well. Okay, so that that's a that's a yes now, uh, yes. and so Not we'll have good. Okay, so we'll have S390 in beta also. Thanks. Good to know. Okay. Any any other topics we need to discuss today in the platform SIG? Uh, next meeting. Which is oh, like oh right. Yeah, thanks very much for reminding. Next meeting. So our next meeting that would be scheduled would be for two weeks from today, which we are at the 21st. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up my calendar. It would be the 5th of December, no way, I will be unavailable that day. So then the next logical one would be the 19th mm -hmm. of December, right before the holiday break. Mm -hmm. uh, is that okay with everybody if we make our next meeting the 19th of December? That's a, that's a workable day for me, at least. 50-50 for me. Would, would it be better, Oleg, would it be better? Well, so go ahead. 
Yeah, so in my case, I'm traveling from December 15th to 18th. Mm. And on 20th, we have a corporate event. So basically, 19th uh, is uh, the best possible option. Uh, but yeah, I still cannot commit that okay, I will be able to participate. Great. Okay, so there's a risk. Uh, Jordan, Alex, any any preference from you? Is December 19 okay for our next meeting? Yeah, that works for me. Yeah, I think that would work for me. Okay, great. All right, then we will put it for the 19th. That means the uh, the December 5, 2019 meeting is canceled. And I'll send a note to that, to the dev list and to the Gitter channel. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Um, I had a question about uh, Jenkins Core, I mean, uh, the new LTS release. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how interesting it is it to others. Uh, so we can uh, take it offline uh, or just uh, do it on the record, whatever works for you. I would love to do it on the record if, since we're all here. What was your what was your topic, Oleg? Yeah, your so um, basically we had a LTS release yesterday, and we still don't have change logs, um, and we still don't have update guidelines. So I want to just sync up with you, what uh, you do there. Yeah, so my, I apologize. Last night I had to go to bed before I could get to the change log in the LTS. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. mark to create change log and upgrade guidelines today. Mm -hmm. So you will probably see them for review as you start your working day tomorrow. That given that I'm, I'm gonna be most of the day today in these webinars, and it won't be till the afternoon my time that I start on them. Uh, so delayed until reviews until Friday morning. Okay. Do we want to consider switching to, well, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, whatever works in this case. Yeah, so I'd say uncomfortable, nearly unacceptable to have a... Uh, uh, don't worry about that. LTS without docs and without release notes or, and without an upgrade guide. Yeah. So there shouldn't be anything which really was upgrade guideline uh, so there. Uh, but yeah, we still need to, to push the things out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So usually we prepare um, uh, stuff for LTS in advance because for LTS, um, since the, so the this right. candidate uh, gets shipped with two week advance, and it means that at this time you can already create change logs and. Uh, um, uh, upgrade guidelines because unless something goes really bad, it's what you're going to get. Right, and and this the mistake I made here with 2.190.3 is relatively low harm. If we make the, if I make the same mistake for the next LTS, that's significant because it will be two dot something a number much larger than 190, either 198 or 204. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there will be far bigger changes that need to be yep. in the so change know, log and in the upgrade guide. Yeah, so we definitely know that there will be upgrade guide entries and some incompatibilities there. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so now in terms of calendar, the next LTS RC is due out within the next week or is it a few uh, weeks? It's uh, December 18th. Okay, next. Have... Yeah. You say December 18th? Yes. 
Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. So, uh, just uh, for information, um, yeah. So, Martin already knows the story, but uh, we are uh, basically in the pick your poison state uh, because there was a fix for persistence model on the startup um, in uh, version 2.1, uh, sorry, 2.199. Um, and uh, uh, they were just uh, regressions discovered in JCASC uh, after this uh, fix. Uh, so yeah, now we check, uh, take the 2.204 with some fixes on JCASC site, uh, or we uh, take a version before 2.199, but at the same time, uh, there are legitimate uh, bugs and uh, configuration uh, safe there. So these bugs uh, have been in the Jenkins code for a long time. And I assume that the discussion on the Jenkins mailing, on the developer's mailing list continues? Yeah, it's pretty hot there. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, so I'm not sure where we will finally finish with that. Uh, there is no changes uh, between uh, the versions uh, which really impact uh, um, in the platform seek. I mean, uh, there is none of our stories uh, which are included. Uh, but yeah. Mm. Mm. Still it's yeah, the, so the, the pick your poison state is not not specific to platform that's the challenge right but it is rather that there is mm -hmm. is lots of challenge between the two two places either yeah, yeah. okay well assuming that uh, jcask uh, plugin will eventually uh, land in this special interest group and even without that uh, jcask has been used quite widely for example in docker i think that uh, it's important for sick members to know about it right and the uh, there was a, a patch proposed to JCAS, I think you mentioned that that short term attempts to work around it. Yeah, so but the idea of this patch is that uh, let's just put a uh, sleep uh, in a proper place and keep our fingers crossed that uh, the sleep duration is enough. Right. Uh, that, yeah, I pasted the link. That's not a terribly comfortable, comfortable patch. I yeah, just wait, wait long enough. I've done that lots actually with Selenium style tests, but I don't like deploying those kind of things to production and then relying on them. Just wait longer. Yeah, so that person that do not know what to do there. Uh, yeah, I agreed. Well. I would go to 1.98, but yeah, um, there are legitimate points that it excludes a lot of uh, required features. Right. Yeah. Great. Always. And anything else on the LTS information, Oleg? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so one thing that in the next uh, change log, uh, sorry, in the next LTS baseline, we will need to, to document uh, the packaging changes. So, for example, if you land some uh, uh, Docker uh, image on your platforms, it would be really great if we add them to the change log finally, because we do not do it right now. I just introduced the GitHub releases for Docker packaging. Uh, this summer, but uh, I th think that this bits, uh, at least major highlights, should be in the main change log, and that, you know, pretty much the same for deprecations like macros. Mm -hmm. Good, I agree. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And and so you're saying that right now the <clears throat> the the core Jenkins change log does not talk about the Docker image. Uh, like, neither, uh, about uh, Docker images, nor about packaging. So, for example, uh, when we land change from Alex, uh, it also won't be mentioned automatically because there is no pull request in uh, Jenkins repository, so we don't uh, actually track it. 
great. That makes sense. Mm. So we put it in the change log. And certainly it needs uh, needs to be in the upgrade guide, right? Packaging mm. changes. Um, well, packaging changes which really require actions for people who upgrade. Right. So for example, for Windows installer, yeah, the installer would behave a bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess uh, they're compatible. So I mean uh, that you can upgrade in a historical Jenkins instance with the new installer. Oh, good. Okay, so it won't be a the one of the upgrade steps is completely remove your Jenkins installation, your your Jenkins MSI, and add a new one. Good. Okay. Yeah, at least I suppose so. So it would be nice to double check it with Alex because yeah, it's a quite important thing. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I guess Alex. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether he is listening, but yeah, you can follow up later. Fine. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other topics we need to put on our for discussion today? We are all of the overtime. So we are. I think we're going to go ahead and stop the sharing. Then I will. I will post a recording. Thanks very much to all of you, Jordan, Alex. Thanks for being here. See you in four weeks. Thanks a bunch. Bye. All right. Bye.